Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Learning Engineering Solutions. In this video, you will learn how to do pump sizing and how to select a suitable pump as per your required services. A pump is a mechanical device that uses to transfer different fluids from one location to another location or from a low levels to high levels or from a low pressure to the high pressure areas. Basically, it converts fluid mechanical energy into pressure energy. Here are different scenarios for which the pump head is calculated. If there is a no difference between the outlet elevation and the inlet elevation, then pump head will be zero. But as the outlet elevation increases, the pump head also increases. Mainly there are two types of the pump, dynamic pumps and displacement pumps. While the dynamic pumps are further divided into centrifugal pumps, axial flow pumps, mixed flow and radial flow pumps, peripheral pumps and, spe and special effect pumps. It includes jet pump, gas lift and electromagnetic pumps. Similarly, displacement pumps are further divided into reciprocating pumps, piston and plunger pumps, diaphragm pumps, and rotary pumps, while rotary pumps are further divided into single rotor and multiple rotor, like gear pump, loop pump, and screw pump. This is the basic input data required to proceed the sizing calculations. You will require the absolute pressure head which is the pressure on liquid surface, positive or negative static head, friction head which is comes in the, uh, in the suction and the discharge fittings across the pump just like strainers or the NRV, acceleration head due to the ups and downs at the discharge of the pump and the velocity head and you will also need to know the absolute vapor pressure at suction temperature of fluid. After collecting the required input data, you will start the sizing procedure. And the first step of the sizing procedure is to select the right type of pump as per your required capacity and the destination pressure. In the second step, you will calculate the net positive suction head available. And in the third step, you will verify the net positive suction head against the net positive suction head requirement. This is the critical part of the pump sizing and in the fourth step you will estimate the maximum suction pressure which is required for the pump seal design and in the fifth step you will estimate the maximum discharge pressure which is required for the downstream equipment and the piping design and in the last step you will calculate the pump specific speed to estimate the pump efficiency. In the first step According to your requirement, whether your uh, requirement is to, uh, to handle the higher capacity of the fluid or to uh, generate the higher pressure at the downstream, you will select the pump. If there is a higher capacity, see, uh, if, if your requirement is to, to deliver the higher capacity of the fluid, and the pressure range is medium side on medium side then you will select the centrifugal pump but if your target is to to deliver the fluid at the high pressure with the low capacity then you will select the positive displacement pump in the second step you will calculate the net positive suction head available here is the formula to calculate the net, net positive suction head. HP is the absolute pressure head due to pressure on the surface of the liquid going to suction. HS is the static head whether it is positive or negative. HF is the friction head in the suction piping including entrance and exit losses. H is, HA is the acceleration head while HV is the velocity head. And HVP is the absolute vapor pressure of the liquid. In the third step, you will 
check the net positive suction head required and it is important that available net positive suction head must be higher than the required net positive suction head and in this table there are some typical services for which the value of net positive suction head required is given for the liquid at the boiling point it is 0.3 meter for the subcooled liquid 0.2 meter while for the boiler feed water it is 0.6 to 0.7 meter in the fourth step you will calculate the maximum suction pressure which is used to design the seal of pump in the formula here states that the dp is the design pressure of a suction vessel while the delta p is the pressure drop across the the internal such as trays and it mostly used uh, in the cases where there is a stripper or absorber to accommodate the pressure drop across the packing or the trays if the data is not available then we will use the 0.3 kg and it can also be neglected with the consent of vendor Uh, similarly hs max is the liquid height between highest liquid level and the pump suction nozzle so after putting all these values we will get the maximum suction pressure in the fifth step we will calculate the maximum discharge pressure and the maximum discharge pressure is the sum of the maximum suction pressure which we have calculated earlier and the the pre pump differential pressure at rated capacity while the pump differential pressure at rated capacity is also multiplied with the factor depending upon the driving force whether it is motor driven or the turbine driven if it is motor driven then the factor will be 1.25 and if it is a turbine driven then the factor will be 1.38 and the maximum discharge pressure is important for the designing of downstream equipment and the piping in the sixth step you will calculate the specific speed and the specific speed defines the pump impeller geometry performance characteristics and pump efficiency here is the formula to calculate the specific speed where n is the speed of rotation qd is the flow rate at design and h is the differential head in the case where there is a double suction of the pumps we will use the half of total flow rate in the seven steps you will assess the efficiency of a pump and efficiency of a pump depends upon the specific speed of the pump against its capacity say for the constant capacity if the speed of the pump increases its efficiency increases and here you can analyze in your relevant case to estimate the efficiency of the pump at this stage you have calculated all the required parameters for the manufacturing of the pump or to place the order of a pump which can be shared to the vendor on the other hand you can also increase the performance of a, a original pump using the affinity law and the affinity law states that the impact of impeller diameter and the uh, rotating speed of the pump with the flow rate differential head and brake horse power so overall we get the performance curve which defines the optimum point where the pump efficiency is the high <laughs>